welcome to this Good Friday service. And I pray that you're all safe and well. Welcome as we again join our hearts and spirits together in the most difficult times of this pandemic. For those who have lost loved ones, for loved ones who are ill, we extend the love of Christ this Good Friday. I hope you have found our Holy Week services have given some encouragement, some comfort, and perhaps a new insight into God's love working in the frailty of our humanity. So let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather together, we remember the supreme sacrifice of our King, the Lord Jesus Christ, led like a lamb to the slaughter, clothed in humility and grace. He willingly offered himself to death so that we might live forever. We are truly thankful for the extent of his love, stretched out on a cruel wooden cross. We dwell on the pain he bore for us and are truly grateful for the forgiveness that he offers. As we worship and praise now, help us to live in the wonder of his goodness and marvel at his endless grace. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to firstly read from Mark chapter 15, verses 21 to 32. On the way, they met a man named Simon, who was coming into the city from the country, and soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was from Cyrene and was the father of Alexander and Rufus. They took Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they tried to give him wine mixed with a drug called myrrh, but Jesus would not drink it. They crucified him and divided his clothes among themselves, throwing dice to see who would get that piece of clothing. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The notice of the accusa accusation against him said, The king of the Jews. They also crucified two bandits with Jesus, one on his right and the other on his left. People passing by shook their heads and hurled insults at Jesus. Aha, you are going to tear down the temple and build it back up in three days. Now come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and teachers of the law made fun of Jesus, saying to one another, he saved others, but cannot save himself. Let us see the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. And the two who were crucified with Jesus insulted him also. Amen. Have you ever wondered why? Why he died for you? A death so terrible that he did endure. Alone on the cross, our sin he did take. So we might be with him on judgment day. Died 
at Calvary so we might be Again, I'm going to read from Mark's Gospel, from Mark chapter 15, verses 33 to 47. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people there heard him said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And one of them ran up with a sponge soaked in cheap wine and put it on the end of a stick. Then they held it up to Jesus' lips and said, Wait, let us see if Elijah is coming to bring him down from the cross. With a loud cry, Jesus died. The cutting, ham- the cutting hanging in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The army officer who was standing there in front of the cross saw how Jesus had died. This man was really the Son of God, he said. Some women were there looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph and Salome. They had followed Jesus while he was in Galilee, and had helped him. Many other women who had come to Jerusalem with him were also there. It was towards evening when Joseph of Arimathea arrived. He was a respected member of the council, who was waiting for the coming of the kingdom of God. It was preparation day that is, the day before the Sabbath. So Joseph went boldly out, boldly into the presence of Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that Jesus was already dead. He called the army officer and asked him if Jesus had been dead a long time. After hearing the officer's report, Pilate told Joseph he could have the body. Joseph brought a linen, a linen sheet into, and took the body down wrapped it in the sheet and placed it in a tomb which had been dug out of solid rock. Then he rolled a large stone across the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, was watching and saw where the the body of Jesus was placed. Amen. It was John Stott, an Anglican priest and theologian, who said, Before we can begin to see the cross as something done for us, we have to see it as something done by us. It was Charles Mahoney, another equally prestigious minister, who said, Unless you see yourself standing there with a shrieking crowd, full of hostility and hatred for the holy and innocent Lamb of God, you don't really understand the nature and depth of your sin or the necessity of the cross. 
this Good Friday, I wonder if these statements pierce that place at the very heart of who we are. They did mine. The cross was on the heart of God before the moment Adam and Eve rebelled against him. When we read the Bible, we see this in every book of the Old Testament. It was the very reason God became one of us. From Jesus' birth, the cross cast its shadow ahead of him. His death was central to his mission. It seems that sin, sin is certainly not a word that we like or accept. I wonder if today, if we even understand what the word means. Today we say, it feels right, then it must be right. If I'm not harming anyone, what's to stop me? Sadly, it is in suffering that we find the meaning of the consequences of our actions. All we hear people say, I don't deserve these things that happen to me. And what I would say on a personal level, there were consequences to my actions that I never foresaw or expected, but they happened because I was far away from God. You won't read that in any newspapers. You won't see the word sin on the small or big screen unless it's done so with derision. But it certainly is central to the Bible and is the reason for the cross. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God proves his own love for us in that well we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Sin simply means to miss the mark, to fall short. Each of us watching this service have a moral standard we aim at, right? Not lying, not cheating, not speeding, not hating someone because they are a different color or race or status. But how many times, how many times do we fail to hit our own moral standard? Then we look at God's moral standard of moral absolute and flawless perfection. Well, no one, no one can honestly say that they have no sin. And this is why Jesus came, and this is why Jesus died on the cross. So let's be focused. Jesus hung on the cross because of me, and he hung on the cross for me. As we read from Mark's gospel, we see that Jesus endured what he endured for you and me. Jesus was tried six times in the hours before his crucifixion, three times before the religious leaders at that time, one before Annas, the former high priest, one before Caiaphas, the current high priest, and one before the Sanhedrin, the ruling Jew Jewish body. And each time he was charged with blasphemy since he was claiming to be the Son of God and the Messiah, the chosen one prophesied in Scripture. The religious trial showed the degree to which the, the Jewish leaders hated Jesus because they carelessly discarded many of their own laws. Each trial was illegal according to their own Jewish law. Three of the trials were before the Roman authorities, first before Pilate, who, when he found out Jesus was from Nazareth, sent him to the Jewish political leader of that region, Herod Antipas, who was in the town at that time, and then back before Pilate. The charge here was not blasphemy. He was charged with inciting to riot, forbidding people to pay taxes, and claiming to be the king of the Jews. All of these charges were obvious misrepresentations of Jesus' teaching. And in fact, Pilate found Jesus innocent of these charges. But because Pilate was charged by the Roman emperor to keep the peace, he caved in to the demands of the crowd. Our world is full of injustice. Slavery, racism, hate crimes, genocide, mass shootings, war, and now the indiscriminate COVID-19. The list goes on and on. But this was the worst of all injustices. As to the charges that he claimed to be God's son and the Messiah, guilty as charged. But in the face of all the evidence in the Old Testament scriptures that pointed to the truth of his claims, Instead of hailing him as the Messiah, they beat him and dragged him before Pilate as a blasphemer. As to the charges of claiming to be a political aggressor against the emperor, the evidence was so scant that Pilate declared him innocent, and yet he sentenced Jesus to the cruelest of deaths. He was handed over to the Roman authorities. He was beaten and whipped by the Roman soldiers, 
soldiers who knew how to inflict pain on a prisoner. Barely alive, they took Jesus outside the city walls to Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Golgotha, or Calvary in, in, is the Latin word, was a rounded, rocky mold, mound, vaguely resembling the shape of a human skull. And all of this, all of this was prophesied centuries before it happened. Jesus tried to get them to see it up until his last breath. He cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which, of course, is the opening line to the 22nd Psalm. Jesus was saying, look it up. What's going on right now on this hill was prophesied a thousand years ago. And when you read the 22nd Psalm, you see perfectly accurate description of this fateful day. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads. He relies on the Lord. Let him save him. Let the Lord rescue him, since he takes pleasure in him. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are disjointed. My heart is like wax, melting within me. My strength is dried up like baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You put me in the dust of death, for dogs have surrounded me. A gang of evildoers has closed in on me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People look and stare at me. They divided my garments among themselves, and they cast lots for my clothing. The temple was the center of Jewish religious life, the place where the animal sacrifices were carried out. The temple had an outer court, and then an inner court, and finally the Holy of Holies, considered the dwelling place of God. And this is where the sacrifices were made to appease God. There was a veil or a curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple. The curtain represented the separation between sinful man and the Holy God. And once a year, the high priest would enter, go behind the curtain to the Holy of Holies to slaughter the Passover lamb and make atonement for their sins. The curtain was close to 60 feet high, and it was about four inches thick. And verse 38 says that the curtain was torn in two, not from bottom to top, but from top to bottom. The moment Jesus gasped his last breath, the curtain symbolizing the separation between God and humanity was removed. This is important for us to grasp. The separation is removed not by human, human ingenuity or effort, but by God himself. When Jesus died, his blood was the ultimate, eternal, singular sacrifice that atoned for and paid for my sin and your sin. Three years earlier, John the Baptist had declared the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry with the proclamation, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus repeatedly declared that he would suffer and die for our sin. At his last supper, he told the disciples that his body would be broken for us and his blood shed for us. And now all that had been foretold had come true in this singular act of love. It is in what is probably the most recognizable verse in the Bible, yet undoubtedly the most ignored. Jesus said, for God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Look at that word, everyone. One translation says, whoever. Another says, anyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that everyone, anyone, whoever believes in him will not perish that is, continue to be separated from God, but be united in him and with him, not just in this life, but in the life to come. Amen. Let's join together again in prayer. Heavenly Father, we remember today the pain and suffering of the cross, all that Jesus was willing to endure so that we could be set free. He paid the price, such a great sacrifice to offer us the gift of eternal life. Help us never to take for granted this huge gift of love on our behalf. Help us to be reminded of the cost of it all and forgive us for being too busy or distracted by other things, for not fully recognizing what you have freely given, 
what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, that by your wounds we are healed. Thank you, because of your huge sacrifice, we can live free. Thank you that sin and death have been conquered and that your power is everlasting. Thank you that we can say with great hope, it is finished, for we know what is still to come. And death has lost its sin. We praise you for making all things new. Lord, help us to see a new world after this pandemic, one with greater care and appreciation for each other, one where we see your loving hands in everything we do. We again pray for those who have lost loved ones, those who are ill at this time, taking a few moments of silence to bring them to the throne of grace. We again pray for all those brave nurses, care staff, doctors, the police, all those involved in keeping our day-to-day -day lives going, council workers, transport workers, food producers and distributors, for all their families, keep them safe and well. And Lord, we also pray for ourselves that we would emerge from this crisis closer to you and each other, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to sing together now how great the Father's love for us. And I want to thank Yvonne for kindly uh, recording this uh, wonderful, wonderful hymn for us, How Great the Father's Love for Us. So go in peace and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen.